Okay, and um, hello and welcome to this episode of Meet the Goddess. I'm Matilda, your host, and today I'm welcoming Flower Diamond, which is a dear friend, wonderful woman, and a poet, which is wonderful because a writer, I love that. <laughs> but it doesn't happen often that I get to have writers here, and I'm hoping to have more and more, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a topic that is so, so dear to me. So welcome, 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 Flower. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Matilda. This is super fun. <laughs> so we haven't really decided what we're going to talk about. We are just going to go with the flow and see what comes out. Uh, and every conversation I have had with Flower so far has been absolutely amazing. A lot of fun <laughs> and I have learned loads actually uh, about inspiration and about the news and about how to go about um, finding the news and inspiration in every little things in life so um, that's just that's just amazing <laughs> I actually <laughs> want to thank you for that already for all the wonderful conversations we've had Oh, thank you. And, and that's the beautiful thing about interviews. There's something very magic about having a two-way conversation with a person or with your writing, with the muse, any, the, uh, you're always, but in nature, you're always having a two-way conversation, Matilda, like you're constantly communicating with the earth and the water and the animals and our families and society this actually what we're doing right now is writing it's you know two-way conversation with a paper and pen and uh, i love interviews they are such magic you know that's what makes the world turn <laughs> getting to know each other <laughs> getting to know your exactly. inspiration yeah we're doing it! Yay! <laughs> Simple. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It is actually so much about what I love about this part of the work is to be able to 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 connect and know each other, learn about each other. What 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 does it for you? What does it for me? And then combine it together. Um, so when we talk about the muse, can you just, yeah, can you just talk a little bit about that? Because the, the muse yeah. is something that I guess is different for everyone. Yeah, it is. It's because we all have our own um, like fingerprint, right? We all have our own special uh, like thumbprint and everyone's different and it's unique to us and that's what we're communicating that's what i interview with every day is the thumbprint and that's why i'm this crazy lady wearing this flower behind my ear <laughs> because this is to remind me to listen <laughs> to the interviewer or the interviewee interviewer listen to the muse because we often are it's a one-way conversation like most of my day is it's very rare that i actually tune in <laughs> so I have lots of, I have these bunny ears behind me. <laughs> I have all kinds of cues in my house to remind me to, okay, wait, just listen, because there's a part of me that is going to help me navigate my story and mm -hmm. maybe help me edit it because we're in a living story, just like our fingerprints and um, help me navigate it so I can get to a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. or to the place I'm supposed to be instead of like reading the same page over and over and over again because mm. that's what I tend to do so I kind of think of writing as actually living too there's there's not a difference mm, I, I really yeah I really like that um, and, I, and I suppose the do mix I, I find uh, maybe maybe you find that as well I don't know that when I mean um, listening more than i get this storytelling happening uh which is what gives me then ideas for novels and books and stuff mm -hmm. um it can mix with reality really quite a bit it's like a is there like a daydream 
that you don't know when you're dreaming and when you're actually just awake and <laughs> I don't know do you find that as well yeah well we get inspiration in all different ways you know we might feel it in the body <clears throat> Or I like to call special delivery. Somebody comes and says a word. <laughs> wow, that's a special delivery because it's like, hey, I'm using that in my story, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, we're getting, we're using our outer experience to, um, or just, I don't even like to say inner or outer because I don't know where I am at any given moment. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what this experience is. I don't know if it's third dimensional, fifth, second dimensional, first dimensional, you know, we don't, we really don't know where we are, but it, we are experiencing where we are. And um, so it's that interview process with where am I right now? What am I doing? Am I breathing? <clears throat> I think it's important to breathe because breathing is listening. So I always say, um, uh, there's listening is the difference between thinking about breathing and actually breathing. <laughs> so if you think about breathing, you're like, okay, yeah, I don't know. Mm. it's hard. <laughs> but if you actually just breathe, mm. it's like, hmm, okay, I'm a little stuffed up, but you know, that's, that's, that's listening. Just listen. You don't have to think about it. You're just having a conversation with your friend. And I have a little tea party here. I just have a little tea party with you. <laughs> just start with a hi, how are you? <laughs> we don't have to be too heavy <laughs> with uh, philosophy and and um, all that complicated stuff. Because I find when I get too complicated, I stop breathing. Mm. So I just breathing is listening. And so you're just, okay, What what is the next step? That's all I really want to know. Because I just want to know what is the next step that I need. What's the next word when I'm writing? I literally write word by word. <laughs> I forget the word I just wrote. And I'm in the middle of a word. I don't know what I'm going to write next. And I'm just listening. What's the next word? Okay. <laughs> What's the next word? And that's just, that's how I write one, one word at a time. And I have no idea what I'm writing a lot of the time. And a lot of times I'm like, oh my God, this doesn't make sense. This is so weird. What am I doing? <laughs> so I'm having, I'm not having like a, an enlightened dialogue while I do this. You know, I'm just like, where am I? Go it's like a roller coaster ride. Like, I don't even know this word. I'll get words I've never heard of. <clears throat> <laughs> I have to look up and you just go word by word and then you get the feeling okay I'm done you just the pen isn't moving anymore and then you're like okay uh. <laughs> you, you, you sit back and I look at that it's like okay and you read it and you're like oh, wow it worked it really works and I didn't have to think about it I just listen I had a little bit of tea I interviewed my muse. <laughs> I have some cookies here, team cookies. <laughs> and okay, now I have, I did that process. I wrote uh, 2000 poems about water, just listening for the next word. So, and, and no, I never went back. I just wrote word by word. I never edited one of those poems. They never needed it. <laughs> and I didn't waste any paper. I just have like, um, I think it's, uh, I can't remember, 12, 12 notebooks high of 2000 poems, like no piece of paper got thrown away. That was it. They just, it's a whole stream of consciousness <laughs> into that and complete. Wow. <laughs> so there was no going back. You don't go back. You just go with the flow just by having an interview. Like we don't go back now, right? We're, we're just yeah. in the flow with each other <laughs> and it's, it's perfect. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. That, that is exactly what living in the present moment is all about. You know, just, that's what it makes me think when you're, when you're talking about that, it's like, yeah, I'm, 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 there's a moment that's just been lived. I don't have to think about that again. I'm now here and what's coming next, I haven't a clue. So I might as just well I might as well just be here, 
and breathe with actually when you said that we should breathe I realized that I wasn't <laughs> I, Me too. I was all caught up here <laughs> I was like oh she's just oh yeah now I'm breathing again <laughs> <laughs> for me that's why I, I said I was I was interviewing myself like flower you can start breathing <laughs> like, breathe yeah now. but it, it's it's that silliness of getting caught into the house something should look should look like or shouldn't look like and and the same can go for an interview can go for a poem can go for a painting if you're painting you know like anything you're creating you can get caught into wanting it to look like something and, but that's just not what's happening in the moment. So let's have a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just to break it up. We're breaking up the mind, you know? I have um, lots of, um, of uh, um, sand timers and, and it, they are not here to time me. They're here to keep things moving, <laughs> to remind me, keep the mind moving. Don't get stuck like a rock, you know, just keep moving, you know? I like to drink a glass of water and have a sip of water and just to keep up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just keep it moving. Quite a bit. It, it is. I, All day long, I get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a dead end and then another one and then another one. And you always have to remember to take a few steps back and, and just go for the next one. <laughs> we are surrounded by blocks of stuff like literally there's no way out of it i realized unless i'm listening mm. unless i'm listening i'm stuck because i get trapped in all kinds of um i should i could i you know have to um we get trapped in our emotions we get trapped in uh serious things there's you know like we have legal things in, that we're involved with or um a family things our age our body i mean there's things that really <laughs> seem real <laughs> that mm. keep us stuck but we can even navigate the worst uh circumstances just through listening what's the next step even in our regular lives not just writing it, what's the next do i go left do i go, go right <laughs> That simple, you know, when you're on a trail, going left or right really makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. So just <laughs> listening to the highest part of us and the soul. Um, the muse is everything at once. It's our entire being. It's our, our uh, conscious, our subconscious, and our superconscious connected to the source. It could also be all your chakras connected at once to source. It is like your makaba connected. We're just, we're using everything at once. <laughs> so um, I, I talk about, you go from the mundane, which is like numbers and alphabets to mm. the mind, which creates something out of that, like a word, like breakfast. <laughs> Mm. like you can really when you're cooking right it's like you get your ingredients the mundane then you're like breakfast <clears throat> and then the muse comes in and you create this beautiful breakfast right I'm sure you're yeah. a mom you have to like create like something that everyone is gonna you know put a, um, a smiley face on a pancake <laughs> <laughs> yes you know, like just things come up you know like and, and because especially the kitchen is such uh, really the kitchen reminds me of the heart because it's always it's uh joyfulness but then there's a huge clog of dishes in your sink <laughs> it never ends the kitchen never ends no it never oh ends. my god and then there's like you need a pot and it's like in the refrigerator with last night's food because you're too tired to put in a bowl like it's just like who did that? It's like, you did that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to point fingers and blame, but no, no. It's like, okay, let's go back to basics. <laughs> it's a constant back to basics, which is, we want to just fly. But in this time, it's about including all of us, the everything mm -hmm. about us, even the mundane, the mind and the muse, like, 
nobody's getting left behind. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just the kitchen, and it's a constant. It doesn't end. It gets clean. It gets dirty. It gets clean. It gets dirty. <laughs> and but that's just that's that's writing, right? I mean, <laughs> and living. So I love I love working with the, lots of pots and pans. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm going to have an interview with my pots and pans. <laughs> Let's keep them moving, guys. Oh, God. But anyway. It makes, me, it makes me laugh thinking about uh, in, in, at home when I'm in the kitchen, endless hours like that, trying to create these incredible meals that please everyone, which never actually is happening, but it, I try. <laughs> I, I get so... Uh, I guess I stop breathing sometimes <laughs> and I and I end up often putting the teapot in the fridge and I have my daughter laughing at me, mom, you put the teapot in the fridge again. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> now I, I know I have to remember to breathe. Yeah, <sighs> breathe and sit and then have an interview. You know, I was like, okay, what do you, what, you know, like really, You'd be surprised at what comes up. Like sometimes I want to go eat something and then I check, do you want to eat that? Do you want to eat that means? Is that, no, it's like, oh, okay. And it's like uh, ingredients one after the next, just listen, you know, where do you want to start? A big pan or put, in, and, and the oddest com combinations show up just in the kitchen. <laughs> it's a really fun way to start listening to the muse is just working in the kitchen, which I really feel is like the heart of a home too. And it's a great example of not to be too hard on ourselves because we're, this isn't linear. <laughs> it's not mm. linear. Even with my poetry, um, I don't care about verb, <laughs> verbs or making complete sentences or anything. I don't care if I use the same word three times in a three sentence, <laughs> you know, I don't care if I repeat myself. I'm just listening because I know the muse is also like a time traveler and this is problem solving through poetry and I'm being guided through this maze of words and the muse is taking me into a transmutation process. Mm. And as I go from like the mundane, which could be a problem happening or whatever, I am going into the mind, it's collecting stuff. And then by the end of the poem, there's like a release or a relief. <laughs> Something happens mm -hmm. where it triggers a release. And one of the things a lot of people tell me after they read my poems is that they cry. <laughs> and I don't know, I couldn't use my mind to do that. I, if you had to sit down and make somebody cry, like, okay, <laughs> you, can't, you yeah. can't do that. But the muse will, is, is a time traveler. And it is just, uh, even though there might be 12 words to a page, it's the actual energetics of the poem is like a huge searchlight and it's just flooding whatever the experience is and just bringing it down to the bare elements and so you just have to read one little poem and uh to get this huge banquet in front of you <laughs> that opens you up to a new beginning a celebration to be free of whatever mm. you use uh, uh, worked with you and so you don't have to like look at all the all the details you can just flow just stay in the flow yeah thank you muse <laughs> cheers <laughs> to the muse <laughs> absolutely i have definitely cried at your poem <laughs> and i have laughed uh like there was the the, the one about the garden of the heart that I really was like, this just described the feeling that we have when we go into the garden, when we are together, when we meet up and everything. It just had such an essence. And and it's, it's also what I find wonderful about them. It's like 
that when I read them, sometimes when you share them, they're perfect in the moment. And it's like, I don't need to go back to them. Interesting. It's like, the, as you said, they just move something in that exact moment. And then that's it. Like that shift, that little click has happened. And then you move on. And, yeah. and then the next one, random, it arrives at the right moment as well. <laughs> Wow, that is new information for me because I don't go back either. I write them once and I'm done. I go to the next and the next. Yeah, that's interesting that you said that. That's cool because we're done. <laughs> You're just done and next, yeah. next. What's the next moment? What's the next meal? And it, and it seems like it's the same meal over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> the same dishes in the, yeah, the, the so. same pots and pans and the same sink and you're going crazy, but it's all different, different day, different outfit, different apron, different brand of, you know, uh, tomato sauce or whatever. I mean, just, it's just, um, yeah, you're done with that meal. You're moving on. Yeah, that's mm. cool. Thank you. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. And I... I love, I remember you making um, a connection in a, one of our calls when you were talking about business can be lived in the same way. Like you talk to your business, you interview your business. I remember that that has actually shifted massively. A lot of stuff for me since we've had that conversation, I have actually, even what we're doing now, even these interviews came from interviewing my business and going okay what do we do together <laughs> what are nice. we gonna do <laughs> well spill it man what how has that changed for you this is awesome it has, to hear. Yeah, yeah it has changed in a sense that again a lot of it was trying to do what's expected you know do it being caught in that, that we were saying about how this should and shouldn't look like and that was creating being stuck all the time because there's no muse when you're trying to do what you should expect like you're not listening to her um and so i completely forgotten about what makes sense <laughs> first of all you Perfect. know and <laughs> yeah that's, that was the first step and then okay. go okay well i want to have fun <laughs> i want to have fun and definitely keeping moving. Yeah, keep movement. Because this brings movement. Now, what we're doing today is actually movement. It's going to bring movement to me, to you, and to the entire universe. It's actually moving parts everywhere yes. that we don't even know of. Yeah. And so that all came from our conversation. <laughs> and it's, that's really super duper cool. And and. I find that when people realize they can listen to their business, it's a very easy transition. Like, oh, oh yeah. Like, of course, we know this. We totally know this, but we just forgot to connect. But it's, um, but yeah, now, but you can connect at any time. Like, uh, because this is, this is our, this is our muse. <laughs> <laughs> Our muse is like watching us all the time, just like staring at us <laughs> or eons, you know, and it holds all the treasures, right? It knows what we need. All we have to do is listen to it. So I always, I have things around my house looking at me. It's like, oh yeah, the muse, you know, listen, because there's somebody that knows everything about you which is a muse. And the cool thing is that the muse, um, you don't have to explain yourself because it knows everything. Mm. It knows every story. It knows everything about your family, relatives, and ancestors. It knows um, where you're supposed to go and it knows all your tricks. <laughs> it knows all your tricks. <laughs> and, and the muse will tell you things that even your best friend if they told you, you wouldn't listen to them. But for some reason, when the muse kicks in and tells you no, or, um, you know, uh, any kind of detail, you salt out pepper, <laughs> right? That you'll listen, you'll get it through your whole soul. 
the whole your whole being will resonate with that and um and i think when you work with your muse your business will resonate it just mm. resonates it's like it's a tuning fork it just it's a tuning fork and um it is a uh, it's a miracle <laughs> to connect to it it's not hard because it's always been watching us but that initial um interview with the muse is is this power is to be gentle yeah because <laughs> this is the power that rules the universe this is the gentleness because mm. um we've ignored our muses for a long time and i kind of think of it when you're first starting out it's like a teenager sitting on the couch, <laughs> watching TV, eating junk food. And you're going to have to convince that teenager uh, that, you know, I'm sorry I neglected you. <laughs> Will you get off the couch? And what, what can, you know, it's very, sometimes it's a little tricky to turn off that TV because the, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you want me to? be your friend after you I don't know so there's a little bit of a it's a gentle just be gentle and eventually they'll come to you and you know it's just word by word and uh all you're doing is listening to what is the next step so mm -hmm. it's not like um affirmations or I want this get this for me that's not what it is this is just an interview and listening to your friend <laughs> you know this is your this is someone who's gonna this is the uh, someone who's gonna lead you to your treasure and mm. the treasure is this the remembrance that you're love that you are built from love and that's um that is the uh that is uh, this, this is, this is love. This is you, the blank piece of paper, right? That's love. You start every page with love. You're built from love from this. So, and your, our books are made from love. I have just a blank book here. <laughs> just a book of love doesn't have anything on it. You're free. You can be anything you want when you get here. So the muse can take us here to where, um, back to where it all began, where everything was built from love. And then our stories are added to that. And um, it turns out that our stories are love too. <laughs> no matter how bad they look, <laughs> it's all love. That's the one thing um, I have learned is that everything is love, uh, no matter how much I try to um, judge it. No matter what it is, it has all been built from love because we can edit any story because it was built from love. And um, that's profound. <laughs> it <laughs> is profound. very, very profound. Yes. You can find love in every, every story that you tell yourself and that you've been told as well. Like it's, there's, there's some amount of healing in that alone. Because you can look at everything then through a lens that, or, or actually maybe you can remove the lens <laughs> and actually really look at things around you in a different yeah. way. When you were talking about the muse that way, it made me think about when I was a kid and I had an imaginary friend that was a little bird. It, it would be perched on my finger. So if you were looking at me from the outside, you would see me talking to my finger. <laughs> but obviously there was a bird on top oh, cool. of it. <laughs> but like, and then at one point someone tells you that imaginary friends don't exist. And then you stop. And I, I guess it made sense that then after a few years, as you go back to it, you find it as a, as a, very annoyed teenager that is like well you've neglected me for like 20 years and now you want to talk to me again <laughs> that doesn't work oh, or it does yeah. i'm gonna take it easy so yeah imaginary friends are good yeah. <laughs> bottom line is yeah. if you're talking to an imaginary friend that's the news talking to you isn't it yeah it's um yeah that's beautiful that's where, um, yeah, that gentleness comes in. 
and just to say, hey, I'm sorry. Mm. I didn't know, you know, I got caught up. It's, um, I can't, couldn't help it, couldn't help myself. Mm. <laughs> but now I know, and once you know, it's hard to go back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Once you know, it's like you get that um that those um hunches and that you just you kind of feel like the tug on your apron, like, hey, you remember, you remembered me. Okay. You know, like even though the teenager's on the couch, it's listening to what you're cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's aware, you know, like and then pretend like I'm gonna pretend I'm sleeping now, but it's it's you know, testing, a little bit of testing. And then, um, and then just being gentle with yourself too. And, uh, yeah. And there's going to be, uh, for me, um, you know, when I have my pen on paper, I get, uh, antsy, like, oh, what's the next word? I get like cranky sometimes or distracted. I think about other stuff all, every time, every time <laughs> I'm not breathing, but I'm just, I just hold the pen to paper and I just, I just wait for the next word, you know, like that's, that's it. Just, just wait for the next word. <laughs> and then once you start, it, you know, we, who knows what's going to happen. Sometimes a poem is very short. Sometimes it, it fills up a whole page. Mm. That's why I, I like to work with small little books because it kind of, uh, helps uh, not to get so overwhelmed with uh, mm. you can finish uh, quickly um, depending on what you're working with but yeah it's um it's a fun adventure it's really uh, just getting out of the way and listening and having fun with finding ways to listen <laughs> that's really mm -hmm. all you got to do <laughs> And I find suppose that, to... that looks different for everyone, even the finding the way to listen, finding those ways to, to get out of the way. Um, yeah. It can be very different for everyone. Like I find driving in the car is one of those brilliant places where I really get out of my way. And like, I don't have a pen, of course, because I'm driving. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but like so much can come through at times I really have to pull over and write. Um, it's one place that really just works, but I'm sure it's different for everyone. I love that. I would interview your car. Your car sounds like a special magic portal <laughs> place. You know, this is modern times. We don't have to be in a, what well, we adore our gardens and nature, <laughs> but we also, the highway, you could interview the highway, you know, everything is alive, mm. you know? And uh, these are, most roads, I think, are old trails anyway. Mm. <laughs> so um, you don't know what that route is, and it's talking to you, it's speaking to you. And all you have to do is listen and write it down. <laughs> I'm just, I just transcribe what I hear. But I'm mm -hmm. also transcribing my own soul. So it's not like, um, I, uh, this muse is you complete like aligned it's just and it's it's your worst parts and your best parts so you can't hide from it <laughs> and you're also not going to leave it alone i think in um other eras of meditation we left our muse behind we, because we left part of us here we left our conscious and our subconscious behind mm. we cut ourselves off and we got to go into different um consciousnesses and play there but we we left our we broke ourselves in half a little bit so this time we're using all of it we're here in our bodies we're in the world and we're also connected to source and to me the pen is uh taking uh what isn't seen through the pen and making it into the real world the seen world mm. so literally just taking the information through the pen, bringing it back to earth. And um, that's it. <laughs> Grounding ourselves in it, 
Um, and and the pen is kind of like an interview microphone. <laughs> it's just it's community. It's a two way conversation, and it's just going to um, uh, transcribe what's happening out there or inside and connect us. Even if we're doing a boring work that isn't a uh, quote creative, um, if we have to do legal papers, you can still talk to the muse and just rearrange a word or two or rearrange um, uh, punctuation and it changes the, it'll help that contract or whatever resonate differently because mm -hmm. <clears throat> what we found was that with quantum editing <laughs> oh i like the sound of this <laughs> quantum editing quantum is, editing that sounds exciting <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, change one like a comma or a period in a in a whole book and it changes the frequency of that book Wow. By that one change. So we're really working beyond our comprehension when we're connected to the muse. Oh yeah, I really like that. And I I have never been really one for um rules, you know, like in school and stuff. Yeah. Oh, you need to stick the period here and the comma <laughs> there, and this is and it's like ah, oh, you know, that just has never felt right. But I wish I had that answer at that time, you know, like teacher, I'm doing quantum editing here. So <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> but really it feels ready. really, really get amazing. Out my way. <laughs> quantum. You, yeah. It's like you can't actually limit. Um, because as you say, I'm looking, I have, I actually have my notebook just there beside me and the page is white right now because I haven't written anything on that, but it's like, it's white. So that's, there's limitless possibilities on that page. Like yeah. I can literally write it from right to, from left to right. I can write up and down, I can write in circles and then yeah. I can put all the different symbols or whatever. And, and to actually tell me that I need to write in a specific certain way that is like, what do you mean? I mean, you're taking 90% of the possibilities out of the picture there, just in Whoa. one That's so why true. Why would you do that? I, right, why would you do that to me? Ouch. Yeah, yeah <laughs> ouch, yeah. It's really sore. <laughs> Whoa, you're tripping me out, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're just, they. <laughs> yeah, we've taken our our options away from ourselves by just not listening we're just wrote no, no, no. wrote and write mm. i guess i don't know but um but yeah to to me this is like um the kindergarten class <laughs> for writing <laughs> that's a, like listening to the muse this is just the this kindergarten <clears throat> and so we have the cuddling and the rule is our this is just our abc's and it's my rule is always be cuddling oh abc <laughs> always be cuddling with your muse so that is the um right we just keep it simple and then anything's possible right we just cuddle hi you you know um and the when i have a writing class the first class i tell everyone to bring their favorite toy to class <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's like what my favorite toy you when was the last time you thought of that right what's my favorite toy and so mine is was the uh tea set that a friend of mine gave me i brought the tea set <clears throat> and then people bring in all kinds of things um uh, one person in the writing community brought a, a picture of dirt <laughs> Because that's like his favorite toy is dirt, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's all, it's very different, but it's that, or teddy bears, you know? Um, uh, but it's that connection right there with your favorite toy. If you have your favorite toy around it, that's the connection. That's the muse. You know, that favorite teddy bear or that, you know, uh, whatever. It could be an action figure. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it could be something that you inherited from a family member or something, but it's just, it's that, that's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and that's love. And that, and that's where we're built from that. Right. We're just, we're built from this. This, this is it. That's it. This white page. And we always come back there to love. So that's really all you need to know <laughs> is that you're built from love. And then we have um, the story. So I do have a little book here I can share. Mm, this is, yeah. I, I write these books. And um, so what we learned in the classes is that our story, which is usually in black ink or something, um, we learned that that is called the black rose which is your story mm -hmm. is the black rose and um and through working with that in the class we found out oh the story of the black rose is love <laughs> just like this is love like the story is also love okay so mm -hmm. it, and because it's reminding you to go back to love <laughs> the story loves you so much no matter how bad it gets it's it's telling you go back to love so it's beautiful it's it's our stories are asking us to listen. That's it. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a miracle. So I'll read, I can read a little bit from this. Um, so this is called yes, The Black me. Rose <laughs> by XFD. And I, I, my initials are XFD because um, I put the letter X in front of it because it's reminding me to get out of the way. Just get out of the way. So. I put the X just like, just get, get me out of the way. So I just listen. <clears throat> so this story was called uh, Transforming Ourselves Through Our Story. And I did an interview with the Black Rose. <laughs> I said, who are you? And the Black Rose said, I am a pattern that you have weaved like a spider. Every thought, deed and action forms my petals, my stem, thorns you made me and i am beautiful so then i said question what games do you like to play and the black rose said ah i love this question there are many games we play every day one day it's with a ball we aim it and it goes right into the hoop other days it is a deck of cards thrown into the air wildly what a mess. <laughs> As a question, how do I clean up my mess? <laughs> the Black Rose said, be with me. Use your pen to unravel every thread knotted. Find joy in this. I will do the rest. And then I said, question, how are you built from love when so many stories are filled with sadness neglect, war, and poverty. And the Black Rose said, rise with me in the knowing that you and I have been through thick and thin, that your story is with me, that your story with me is a glorious one with the raw power to transmute every experience you have. I am a master problem solver. Stick your nose into me and you will inherit the treasures of the roses. <laughs> and, and it is done on the last page. <laughs> oh, that is so beautiful. That, that was really, really gorgeous. I like the, <laughs> the ball that goes right through the hoop and then the cards that go in a mess. Like, it's really like, it's really how every day is, isn't it? Like every moment, like one moment, seems like so smooth and then the next moment it's like a mess a total disaster and you're like yeah <laughs> this is how it goes it really like, is it and and that's me all day long and uh, that's like the kitchen it's it, i got this i got it like everything is clean you <laughs> go in the back <laughs> and then you come back and someone put a pot in the middle of this <laughs> like <laughs> you're like <laughs> Like, I feel like I can't even enjoy it. Like I cleaned it and it's too late. So. <laughs> but yeah. the muse will get us right back in the rhythm. Mm. Yeah. 
it would be boring if it stayed clean all the time right there would be no parties there would be no fancy dinners there wouldn't be any pancakes with smiley faces on them exactly <laughs> it'd be a very sad kitchen if it it was it wasn't moving so i guess we should enjoy and celebrate that the messes is, is love too mm. that the filled sink represents the love of the family coming together it's not a it's not a prison <laughs> mm. it's not a duty it's we're moving we're just pots and pans are moving like we're able to move the story along and really every meal is part of a story with the family it's mm. pretty cool i'm getting goosebumps yes. <laughs> so the, the, yeah, the love I'm is like just a, moving it. <laughs> yeah i'm thinking i after this conversation i have to go downstairs and make dinner for the family but I I think I'm just gonna do it with a completely different spirit it would be like this house is alive and I do say that a lot uh, my house is a total mess 24 7 um but it's really alive like there's so much going on we're four people and we are totally diverse as every person is but we just allow it completely and nice. so like it's a total mess 24 7 but that's that's the beauty of being alive i mean i wouldn't have it any other way right and but it's moving you know and everybody mm -hmm. probably knows where all their stuff is <laughs> yes yeah 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 only the day that you, that you tied the app is the day that you can't find anything anymore so. <laughs> totally it's like you know um and oh i had a conversation with uh, my friend and it and he said you know um it was profound. He said, if you just let the house do its own thing, it'll tell you what it needs. Because mm -hmm. I also place this judgment on my house, like, oh, it has to be ready for guests at any moment, or it has to have um, a certain right. And I hold this judgment that blocks me about, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do, I didn't clean the kitchen. You know, we have this judgment. But to actually listen to the house and say, what do you need today? Interview your house and say, hey, I feel like I'm supposed to do all this stuff and I, I'm not and I'm feeling guilty <laughs> or whatever. Maybe the house doesn't care. Maybe the house says, don't worry about it. I love you. I'm having fun. I don't want it. I want all the dishes to be used because they want to be out and about. <laughs> the yeah. dishes. Dishes love to be moved around. They want to move around the house. <laughs> you know, maybe the the it doesn't want to be stuffy. Maybe the, the house wants everything to grow and and interact and have fun instead of, you know, you can drive around and see which houses are happy and which houses are not. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you can see it. Some have a frown on, like their faces are really um, unhappy. Yeah. Cars are the same. There's happy cars and really angry cars. <laughs> yeah, so you have, a, you know, are you happy house? You know, talk to the house. Is your muse happy? Um, you know, sometimes you might just be completely overwhelmed, but you might see like a very satisfied house in the, your mind, just like happy dragon sitting there with a full tummy like happy that everyone is is in their own flow and maybe that's the flow of your house too we just judge the light that we are and um that is something that is ready to go mm. Mm. we just have to let go of that judgment and i know when a lot of people they want to write they don't write because um one person in the community said, oh, I thought I had to write a perfect sentence. I had to have the perfect sentence to write my novel. Novel. The first sentence is the most important <laughs> sentence. And um, then the fear, then you're stuck, you're not moving. And then she's like, oh, I just listened to my muse and oh, well, <laughs> now things are flowing and However, you know, she's just doing it. She's just in the flow now, exploring. And now it's like so many options are coming and um, opportunities. And um, then you're really going to have a messy house because you're really in the flow. Lots of things coming and going. 
<laughs> uh oh, I was trying to control everything, and now you can't. We don't have control. <laughs> but that's so liberating, though. It's like, I mean, it's once you realize you don't have the control, which we don't have, like uh, on so many things, you don't. So, like, all this clinging onto it doesn't really help anyone. I really resonate with that. Like, there's so many concepts about, oh, a novel has to be written in a certain way to be sold and for people to like oh, yeah. it and the perfect beginning, the perfect end. And, oh, my God, it's so much. You yeah. never start. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, this is, you don't need to read a book about writing unless your muse tells you you need to learn some gr grammar, gr grammatical stylings because of the purpose of your writing. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> what is the purpose of your book or your writing, right? The, mm -hmm. the purpose of it could be uh, you write it and it says, throw me away. You're done, mm -hmm. right? Some of it says, this is just the beginning, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I'm on this. I mean, some of it is, um, you know, uh, share this with somebody. So they're each, each thing has its own purpose, which is different when people talk about intent. This is completely different. This is communicating with your project. Mm. What do you want? And some things that we write aren't for public, and but they are there to transmute problems. <laughs> so mm. I know that this book is empty, but, it, and I could fold, um, uh like a hundred of these and they would each be have a different purpose they're each holding a story in each one of these books of love <laughs> they each have a different purpose mm -hmm. so um uh yeah so we're building our libraries we just have to listen to them and it makes life pretty interesting <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to get bored like that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like, okay, you know, I'm in, fa I, my family is here, you know, I have um, lots of books. I have, um, you know, all these little books here and they're all, they all have a different purpose and um, they all blow me away because <laughs> they're all just from listening to the music. So, um yeah it's just a different way of living and some people might hear the muse or see pictures or symbols mm -hmm. um maybe they'll fold a book and they have to put it on the table and like watch it like a cat for a while <laughs> before <laughs> it kicks in you know like everyone is different um some people in the community they just write one word a page and then some people draw and and some of the um, books have turned into videos now. <laughs> mm. Like really like, whoa, the stuff that's coming through is really uh, inspiring people. They're connecting to um, themselves. I mean, we're just having a conversation with ourselves, and our self is incredible. We are really infinite. We are connecting to our infinite self. And so, uh, yeah. So when you, you start connecting to all that, it is, um, it, you blow yourself away. You blow your own mind. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, there's no going back after that. It's just, you're just working with, purely with inspiration and, um, and there's a lot of it. I mean, it's just flowing. It is a, I have this, um, this is a, uh, this is a bookmark of Niagara Falls here in the United oh, yeah. States. <laughs> I don't wow. know if you guys know about Niagara Falls, but it's yes. a massive, uh, waterfall. And this is like, to me, your heart's desire. <laughs> and this is the power of the muse. It's just, there's a rainbow in there and it's so, it has so much power. And, 
and to me at the very at the very middle of this is your pen <laughs> it's just going into there it's just at the bottom of the fall and um we cannot possibly understand what we're doing but just one word at a time and uh and then we're done and we go on to the next one, like you said. I mean, isn't that incredible? We don't have to keep reading it over and over. We got it. It's that good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it resonates and then we're ready for like a next potato chip <laughs> 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 or our next cookie. <laughs> like, we got another cookie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, yes, I, I guess. There's no going back. That is definitely when you when you start tapping into inspired living, like that. If something doesn't really feel inspiring, it's not for you in that moment. Like I, I personally, that that has been the way in the last few months, especially. It's like, no, that doesn't really. It doesn't make me smile. It doesn't resonate. I, I, I'm just not gonna do it. But it makes a lot of sense. It doesn't matter, but it just doesn't appeal to me. So <laughs> what's next? <laughs> Something else, please. Yeah, it's just and and working with the muse, all the other stuff, like you said, it just isn't doesn't stick to you. It just can't mm. because it's it's like you're just doing something else. I'm just I'm doing something else. I'm sorry. Because we're not trying to figure stuff out anymore. It's great. It's just um great practice you, you cannot understand any of this with the mind <laughs> we're no. gonna honor it with our numbers and our letters and our abcs and our numbers which i love numbers and letters and i love the mind it's also it's all included and then it can take a vacation <laughs> <laughs> and then we just flow with the muse and the muse takes the mind and the mundane with it it's like a lifesaver and you get on the boat like in niagara falls and it's just gonna like you just get you just everybody jumps into the lifesaver in niagara falls and just let the water take you mm. just go down and just it's just taking us all on a ride and um it's awesome yeah 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 have you any Poems. Have I any share. poems? Um, oh, that's a good question. Anything. That poems, <laughs> any any little one that jumps out. <laughs> goes, any me, little me. poem that jumps out. Um, okay, I have one that's um, I call we okay these books I'm holding we call them temples. Mm. <laughs> so and they're they're temples because you can fold them out and you can you can um they're actually, you visit them, you can visit mm. them. <laughs> so talking about the mundane, I wrote a book called The Temple of Organization. <laughs> so we visit these temples. Okay. So let's talk about something really um, um, mundane, like um, scheduling, right? We have to schedule mm. those. All right. So, um, scheduling speak clearly to to each element is it happy or does it sway with trepidation double check motivations for all agendas must have some form of purpose so we can interview our scheduling right like do i really need to interview flower what is she up to? <laughs> is this gonna be fun or not <laughs> I I I knew this was gonna be fun. I really did. <laughs> like I was really excited. So this stuff is um really uh I can read the scheduling poem before I schedule and it brings me out of the mind and into the heart. Mm. Because you can't hold on to it and it's like, oh yeah, I'm not I'm not here to schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to speak clearly to each element, you know, mm -hmm. is it happy or does it sway in trepidation? Um, yeah, and I can't figure that out. I don't understand that. <laughs> but all I got to do is read it and go, right? I yeah. 
by reading a poem that you write before you do something is connecting to your muse and then you're gonna flow you just flow you're just gonna do stuff a little differently <laughs> and then you might get special deliveries of inspiration <laughs> that come to you um yeah so uh there's um yeah well let's read another like uh, priorities mm -hmm. okay here we go that's something we all need to do right we have priorities mm -hmm. so um so basically i write a number at the top of my page which is the mundane then i put the mind which the word was prioritize priorities and now the muse kicks in so i like um i call it putting uh putting the water in the kettle now you put yours in the refrigerator <laughs> But this is about <laughs> filling the kettle with water. You put it on the stove, which is like, um, and then you wait for it to whistle. That's all we're doing. You're waiting. The whistle is the muse. So you know it's going to happen, but you're not sure when. But we set it up. I put the number and then the mind. I want to write a poem about priorities. And then I wait for the whistle to blow, which is what's the next word. Mm. So depending on, I've been doing writing like this for over 10 years. So I, my muse and I have a good relationship. So it's different for everybody, but so, okay, four priorities. Tend to the most pressing matter, be it as small as a tack or as big as a balloon, let them not touch one another. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, be, uh, yeah. Yep. So we have all these priorities, right? But if we, the tack and the balloon are very different. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So again, I can't understand it. There's, there's really no need to explain it though, isn't there? It's like when yeah. you hear it read or when you're reading it, it's like, this makes total sense. You're absorbing it at a different level and yeah. and then the mind always tries to go but can i can i paraphrase it can i try to figure can i but there's really yeah. no need it's like the, the job is done you can't do it yeah i you know can. the job is done it's done um right so here's completion um this is just to get me away from the grip of my mind of how i want to control any moment mm. We're all kind of control freaks, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, it's just like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm um, sorry. Uh, so this is six, completion. When the task is complete, it rings the bell for all others to follow its lead. So it's beautiful. That's the flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it's um let's just flow it's it's pretty much saying uh you're never done yeah <laughs> it's just we it's so why worry about it we're <laughs> never gonna get the whole house clean so don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know it's like it's uh, so cool just, you're never uh, gonna you're never gonna write all the words and all the combination of words and all the all the inspiration is never gonna be coming through you know like it just is a continuous flow so keep listening and keep flowing and keep following that inspiration yeah, and just just wait wait for the next word even though it's uncomfortable sometimes like i'll know when i am not breathing <laughs> mm. and the, the angst and the anxiety comes in and i mean i do this throughout the day it's not like you know it's we're in we're going through some tough uh choppy waters right now mm. yes so um this is just the one way i can jump into the lifesaver and i get stuck and i said okay i'm gonna turn my um i'm gonna turn this over <laughs> I'm going to eat a cookie. I'm going to have a drink of water. That's just like my inside joke. 
to my muse. So it's not like always just sitting and writing and that kind of stuff. A lot of it, I mean, a lot of the times I'm just like sitting on the couch, just steady on, <laughs> you know, with just like, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? Trying to get out of my brain of what I think I'm supposed to do and just let the muse guide me. So it's, um, it's nonstop fun around here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just trying to get back to love try to get back to love I mean you can't try you already love but you just have your fingerprint on everything and so basically a lot of the day I'm just spraying spraying I got fingerprints everywhere I call it the scene of the crime <laughs> of my judgments my expectations um you know, my thoughts and feelings about whatever all over the place. So I just spray it down, wipe it off and then see what is left. Over. Is there inspiration there? <laughs> Can I stop this now? <laughs> yeah. That's so, a beautiful, yeah. that's a beautiful way to describe it. It really resonates and makes so much sense that we just put fingerprints of all thoughts and judgments everywhere. And, but that we just, when you pause and remember to breathe and then bring it back to listening, it's like you've erased all of those. It's like you've, you've cleaned the, the board white and you can then see what comes next. So it's exciting. You can actually do that. You can reset at any moment. At any moment, completely. The muse takes you, wipes it all, all at once because we're everything at once. The music takes it all at once. So it's easier, it's faster. <clears throat> it's going through time and space. It's going all the way back through family relatives and ancestors. Um, <clears throat> it's moving and so, right, it's the, um, the rainbow spinner. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, a friend of mine asked me, uh, what is writing? I'm like, what are you, why are you asking me this question? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? What is writing? And so anyway, I showed her, I, it was it was just this. I said, we start with love. I don't know if this is going to work here, but, um, and then it's just a spinner. Woo, oops. So um, that's it. It's just the rainbow spinner. Oops, sorry. I won't be able to do that cool. I won't look cool doing that, but you get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the, the logo back here. That's the rainbow spinner. It's just, it's moving uh, everything at once as a rainbow spinner and um that's it that's writing mm. so yeah we're just spinning the rainbow spinning everything gets it's like yep that's it that sounds like living as well like as you said it, it's very connected because that's what we do every day i mean you don't know how it's going to go you just spin it at the beginning and just then go with the flow <laughs> just go with the flow you're like okay but and it just it's um it's profound it's um you know i even though i've i've written so many poems and it's still like i get stuck i still get stuck you know like we're just going through a lot of data mm. and uh if we just keep it moving um we, we become world turners, returning the whole world mm. by us, our little part, we're our little part turning our part. Isn't that amazing? You can just, uh, with pots and pans and washing your dishes, you turn the world yes. out of being stuck. Yes. Every, oh, I am so, so, so behind that. It's every little thing that you that we do out of that inspired place, out of reconnecting with love, even if it's just for a second in the whole entire 24 hours of a day, you have shifted something powerful in the universe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just turning on the, the water, just turn on the water in the sink. You're moving. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> this is helpful for me because I'm. this is good. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> Because <laughs> I often resent, you know, the kitchen, but um, 
but I can I can move that resentment by just turning on the water mm -hmm. and washing the pots and pans and just and I'm like okay I'm moving now I get it now I understand that the kitchen is giving me a chance to move stuff around mm -hmm. that if it wasn't like it is I wouldn't be it's giving me the opportunity to do it it's giving me it's allowing it's movement it's maybe more of a playground <laughs> than a kitchen you know like it's it's moving a story it's moving uh, the day it starts the day it moves the day it um helps you get through the afternoon and closes things out at night we close it down so it's um yeah i have an, i'm now more grateful for the process of keeping the kitchen clean <laughs> So like uh, this interview isn't for writers, it's for housewives. <laughs> it's for housewives, keeping it clean. <laughs> you, you still can't write, but you're going to be so happy going into your kitchen from now on that you won't mind. <laughs> well, you know, I know. And I think now that if we just clean the kitchen, it's going to help us be better writers because we're connecting to our muse. Well, never better. That's the other thing. You know, when you're writing with the muse, you're perfect. Mm. you don't get better <laughs> you my writing has hasn't changed I just listen to the one word after the next it's not about getting better like you're you start at perfection yeah because if you're talking about getting better you're denying the perfection of each moment so that makes no sense yeah there's just you just are you just one word after the next and that's it it's perfect from the get-go mm. mm. from mm. the get-go <laughs> Which means that if you feel that you have uh, words in you that want to go on paper, there's never, I guess, a bad moment to start and you don't need to be anything different than you are right now. You don't need to be a professional writer or any definition. You can just get your piece of paper and your pen and make the magic. Yep. Listen. Just listen. <laughs> yeah, just listen. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's a, uh, I'm just so grateful that that information came, you know, to do that, to play with the muse. Mm. Just, uh, just play, keep it fun. They, they have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and you listen to your muse and then that connection helps you talk to your business. And also families are businesses too. So you can talk to the, the soul of your family. Mm -hmm. And like you're talking to the, the soul of your house you live in. So the, the muse is kind of, um, it uh, helps, I don't know, it just uh, helps, uh, it, it helps you transmute information without trying as hard <laughs> you don't have to try so hard just yeah. connect and it connects you to everything and um maintain a fun relationship with it and it'll do all kinds of stuff in the background for you so then when you um so you're literally you get up and you're writing you're not writing but you connect to your muse you've been writing all day and then by the time you get to paper you don't you just write I think a lot of people go, okay, I got to sit at the desk. And I've heard this. I got to get chained to the desk and write that novel. Mm. That muse is like, I'll see you later. No way. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big, I don't have one with me, but I'm a big fan of clipboards. I love the clipboard because you just, you take it around. You always have a, a place to write on with a clipboard. So you don't have to sit mm. at the desk, <laughs> but you start writing in the morning. You know, you just, all you got to do is you just, uh, turn, I have so many of these. You just turn over a, uh, just a play, anything that you connect to your muse play and you're writing. You're like, okay, cool. I'm writing. Awesome. I'm going to stare at that. <laughs> and then you'll find yourself when you're ready to write or when it comes together, it'll be go smooth. Because you've been mm. you've been warming up the tea kettle all day, 
And then the whistle blows and it's like, ah, I know what I know, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I really like that. Um, and it just brings that limitlessness to everything. And it doesn't apply just to writing, as we were saying, like, oh, you don't need to be different than what you are. Whatever you're doing in every moment, you don't need to be different from what you are and just get doing it. So if it's a business, if it's a, if it's a cake, <laughs> if it's yeah. whatever it is, just, just do it by pausing, listening, and then just flowing with it. So I, I yeah. That's just, that's the recipe. <laughs> that's the magic recipe. It seems so simple, but it, it is actually really simple. Yeah. I love the cake. I love the <laughs> cake idea. Because that's what a little kid will do, right? If you let, if you set a little kid into the kitchen that didn't have that cookbook framework forced upon them, right? Mm -hmm. And you just put all, everything out, they'd be like, okay. <laughs> mix it and then they love it yes they yeah because it. you have fun you have fun in the process rather than always thinking about the finished product the right. finished product as you say like you it doesn't matter it's done but the whole entire process of doing it was the real enjoyment the real inspiration came through in every little part of it yeah yeah just like let it go like let just let it go <laughs> just like that's it we just gotta let it go and um you know i have this thing i mean we just always we have our things you know we all have our things and it's like okay i'm going to work out this thing with my muse <laughs> The muse knows what my thing is before I even say it, you know, it's just the best friend. It's your business partner. It's, um, you know, it's wonderful to connect, um, to write birthday cards with the muse. Mm. If you need the right words for anything, the, the most simple things. Um, we have Christmas coming. You can write your Christmas cards with the muse. All you have to do is write somebody's name and then just wait for the next word and out will come amazing things. I write a poem to my landlord every month now. <laughs> That's so beautiful. <laughs> that is so beautiful. I ran out of like boring envelopes and all I had were um, cards. Mm. So I got the hunch like, Oh, you're gonna do that okay and then I wrote his name and then a poem came out and then the cool thing about working with the muse is that because you're working with source and divinity you're completely confident of doing anything with your work like nobody can tell you to edit it or because you know uh-uh yeah <laughs> I know this word is a directive from a star and you know like this word came from far away and it landed on my page and it will not move and you can't make me move it yes <laughs> we're these these poems are multi-dimensional and mm -hmm. and when you're working with the muse you're working with multi multi-dimensional storytelling so because of that you're confident in going out in the world and being a little crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. oh yeah. You're like protected, not protected, but you're just in a quantum thing where people are going to read it and get what they need out of it and whatever that is. So I can write my landlord a poem with my rent check and he'll receive it in the way um, that the muse designed it to help me transmute whatever um cosmic ties and quantum ties i have with my landlord and the mm -hmm. land and the address the envelope the stamp you know the, the where the paper the trees that the paper was uh printed from and the ink and my signature and the bank and all you know the the muse is taking all of that mm -hmm. to a nice little poem and then um, my landlord will text me and say, wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah. you know, 
I have a poet, you know, my, and I have a poet in my building. So that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the fun thing about working with the muse is the confidence you gain from mm -hmm. it. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, and the bravery you have through it, because you just know without a doubt that's, this is something beyond my understanding. And um, so I'm, it's not mine. I mean, it's me, but it's not, it's, it's, it's like when I write a poem, I, it's, I don't really have things published out in the world other than like on Facebook. <laughs> But um, it's because I know when I write a poem, everybody gets it. It's it's published to the entire universe. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's hard for me to get it, like you said, and I don't go back, right? But this year I'm going to try to get books together. <laughs> um, but so when we're connected with our muse, we're connecting to everything. We're connecting to everybody. So even if the, the poem starts off, like you can write, I'm angry, right? Because mm. the muse doesn't judge you. And it, it wants to know where you are in your coordinates at this time and place. <laughs> so if you write, I'm angry, and you, you listen to the words, it's transmuting that anger back to love, back to, back to, um, back to this. <laughs> mm. So, um, yeah, it's it's um, profound. You can do be be whoever you are with the music. It just it wants you to be exactly where you are right now. That's it. You just start where you are, and go from there. Um, we we I could stay here for the whole entire evening. Um, <laughs> Because like every time we speak, I learn so much and I receive uh, so much out of this conversation. It, it's you, you can ask like when I go down to to Mark, to my partner, he's like, "Oh, you were talking to Flower." Yes, I was <laughs> because I'm like really okay. happy because <laughs> wow. I just get so much from the conversation. <laughs> but I think for the sake of people listening to this episode, we might <laughs> just have to bring it to a close because uh, we're here an hour and a, half, and a half. Um, so I don't know if like if there's anything else that you feel like wants to come through and you want to share. I think I think we've I think it's all come through. I, I feel like we're at an end too. I feel that's perfect timing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Matilda. This is awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Flower, for, for having been here with me, sharing this space. And I want to also thank everyone uh, listening to this. And um, as usual, I'm going to share in the description uh, contacts for, like, for Flower, if you're interested, if you love her poems, if you want to know more about what she does. Um, wonderful writing classes and everything so it's all going to be in the description and stay tuned for the next episode and <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> bye thank everyone you so bye thank you <laughs>